Welcome to my How You Pop Fest vlog. This is mainly going to be clips from the actual experience, but I just wanted to give you a really quick intro. If you're only here for clips of the performances and you want better footage, skip to weekly when the Sunday footage begins because I was in a much better place. There were too many performers for me to talk about them all individually, but I did really enjoy it as an overall experience and it was a great opportunity to get to know a lot more groups. I was there for the girls only, so a lot of these groups were people I was like vaguely familiar with and I got to actually see them perform form and hear a lot of their music which was just really cool. Let's go, let's get into it. So for this two-day concert I was actually able to get influencer tickets. I was really glad when that worked out and they gave me media accreditation and sent me this email with all of the details um, and then I reached the venue and went to the box office and it turned out that what I'd been told I'd be getting wasn't exactly what happened. So I did get free tickets, they were just like general tickets, that was not a problem at all, that's what I originally asked for. They gave me an arena photo pass so I could take professional footage uh, but then when I reached they said that they actually couldn't allow professional photography. Also the pass that I was given didn't state that it was a press pass even though I was told I would get a press pass. One of the staff members looked at my ticket and said, oh you're not press, you're just normal and then directed me kind of quite abruptly in a different direction. So I was like, okay, maybe this isn't what I'm meant to have. So I went back and I asked them and then they were like, oh yeah, we um, we don't have any press wristbands. What's strange is that they did give us proper wristbands the following day. So I honestly don't know what happened. I feel like they were very disorganized at that point. I arrived at like, I think 3.30. So just after the VIP meet and greet should have started, doors opened later than they said they would. So like the immediate impression wasn't great. Once we got in, it was all good. I found my friend, she was helping like take some pictures and stuff. So you'll see some of the things that she took in this vlog as well. So thank you to her. It was quite cool because they had little intro videos from all the Saturday performers uh, saying hello to the crowd and kind of introducing themselves and then after that they play the most recent music video of that artist and people in the audience were doing the fan chant. I'm gonna insert a clip from P1 Harmony because like the fans were insane for this. And the atmosphere was so good. Then next thing we know the showcase begins. Is this exciting or ominous? Hard to tell. If you're confused, Showcase was still a performance, but it included like uh, tasks and challenges that they had to complete in the middle. So it was a bit more like variety show style. <laughs> Sam Kim was really cool. I liked his atmosphere. Uh, P1 Harmony had like such a great atmosphere as well. Like they had so much energy. Um, and I gotta say the way that they incorporated the challenge of do it like this into like hyping me up for their actual performance of it, um, considering I didn't know the song before I came. That was really impressive. So then there was like a really short like 15-20 minute break. My friend went and got us food. Little note to the venue, there were not enough food options because also everything was selling out so we ended up having to just get like chips. We survived, it was fine. So then the evening concert begins and of course the first two artists have performed so I'm thinking okay who's going to be next? We're going to start to see some of the other people and voila Sam Kim returns. So I looked this up and it looks like when Halley Pop Fest has visited other countries the people in the showcase section have been different to all the people in the evening concert but for this on both the Saturday and the Sunday the two acts on the showcase were also the first two acts for the evening concert. Um, so on the Saturday this actually worked quite well because I felt like they teased a couple of their big songs and then didn't sing them. We were a bit confused after Sam Kim had finished that he hadn't performed Money um, and but then he opens the evening concert with it so yeah that was nice. very confused when he randomly appeared again um, and then we were like okay okay so I guess P1 Harmony is coming back as well that's when we got to see them actually perform do it like this which was really good <laughs> 
We got to see One Us, they had like some amazing choreography with their fans. Um, I realise that sounds misleading. I'm putting in a video, it's all good. With One Us, like, they performed really well, but I've probably got like a top three for the songs that I like by them. They didn't perform any of my favourites. <laughs> In between each act they had like a heartbeat sound and then something would come up saying next artist and me and my friend were saying when Everglow comes on we are going to lose it um, and then suddenly Everglow appears and like I screamed so loud I lost my voice the following morning it's fine it was worth it <laughs> Like, I don't know if they sing that similarly to their recorded tracks or whether their mics weren't turned up enough, I don't know. It sounded suspiciously similar, um, but at the same time, I was singing over them singing more than I did like for anybody else, so maybe that's why. I probably just overpowered it. <laughs> Astro came on. Astro, I, so from what I gather, there are two members I think of Astro who are not promoting at the moment because they're in military service. So it kind of made sense that most of their set was with subunits, but um, I think it would have been nice if they could have done a bit more of their group stuff, but um, I'm not familiar with the members, so maybe they had reasons based on like their positions that they couldn't do too many of the group songs. Then Hasa comes on. I was very excited for Hasa.
It was only when she was performing that I realised she has so much presence to her and she's got some great songs, but actually I forgot that she didn't have that many solo releases, but she obviously did all the big hits. Then Chen comes on, headliner. By this point it was already 10.30 and also the acts were like back to back once the concert started at like 7.45. So there was not really any time to like, I missed a song to go to the toilet because you know, you gotta go. But there was like no breathing room really in between. But I was also then thinking the concept of a headliner meant that they had like the main part of the show, maybe like an hour or so. So when it reached 10.30 um, and Chen hadn't yet come on, he was just about to, I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna actually need to leave early. There were also loads of tube closures and strikes and stuff and I needed to make sure I could get home. So I knew I needed to leave like at 11. But he actually only performed for half an hour. So it was like very similar, if not the same to all of the other sets. The only difference was that he performed last. I had never been to a K-pop event before, is this normal? I, I don't know. I did find that surprising. His voice was so nice. I feel like I don't listen to a lot of ballads um, just like in my free time. I usually like music that gives me energy. So I wasn't too familiar with his discography, but some of the songs I checked out afterwards as well because like I really liked them, especially hearing it live just had like a whole different vibe to it. One thing that I would like to say really in favor of Value Pop Fest is that they did an amazing job incorporating like the staging, the backdrops, the lighting, everything really matched the songs. Everything felt personal and thought out. There was a different, kind of theme of staging for every group but even every song within that and it really added to the atmosphere like I've seen clips from other concerts or like other festivals like I know there's been like some debate about Esper's performance at Coachella and how like they didn't do enough to kind of emphasize the beats of the music I feel like that was done really well at Halley Pop Fest I was quite impressed with that as well okay on to the Sunday this time uh, it was a lot smoother I arrived at like 5 p.m. after all the queues would have died down because uh, I didn't really want to have to queue for an hour again I was told that I would actually have access to the red carpet event if I arrived earlier on the Sunday but it didn't sound like I would have access to the meet and greet in the middle and from what I'd experienced on the Saturday there was a lot of like bad organization there was nowhere to sit in the middle there wasn't enough food options so I wasn't really inclined to go early I went to the box office and this time I was asked would you like seated or standing tickets so I was like okay this is new I said I didn't know I was able to choose um, she said she was meant to give me seated tickets but they still had some standing so if I'd prefer that so I went for seated because I thought my friend would prefer that but then she arrived we discussed it we agreed it would be better to actually go for standing because we We'd really enjoyed it the previous day and we went back they were really great about just like changing the tickets over it was like so easy we got let straight in it was very very smooth and much more what I'd expected from the Saturday arrival we also got given wristbands at the box office when we were there so we could walk straight through um, everybody was really polite I think a lot of it was that the kind of initial tensions among the staff of like not really knowing what was happening had probably eased now they'd had one day of it they knew what was going on then the performance start and weekly is first on and weekly was like the group I was most excited for that day so yeah I'm actually I really like them as a side note I was very shocked with their concept change um, but actually I feel like they they performed it very well in person like I feel like they gave me that charisma that I, I couldn't kind of sense properly on the screen so I don't know if you'll be able to sense it either but in person I could actually see where their company had decided to give them a concept change I did not understand it at the time I kind of liked the song um, but I felt like maybe I liked it for a different group who already had that sort of concept because I loved Weekly's like fun fresh vibe luckily their stage was mostly like that and then they just had outfits that could kind of match either style <laughs>
really enjoyed hearing them perform, but I was very confused when they did perform their biggest hits, Vampire and also After School, in the showcase section. So then I was thinking, is it not like yesterday? Are they not coming back later? Because they'd done all of their hits. Then Paul Kim arrives. <laughs> Like he came up with a pose and said that like he'll be in England later So if we see him do that pose and he'll know that we were at the concert his English was good Which obviously helped um, but it just felt really genuine then we had a little intermission We'd already got our food beforehand at this point because um, <laughs> we we knew better this time and then Obviously weekly comes back, but I feel like the artists who were doing the showcase that's weekly and Paul Kim were not given the same information that the Saturday artists were. I don't obviously know what happened backstage, I don't know any of that, but my speculation is that they were not aware that it would be the same group of people watching them for the showcase and the evening concert, uh, because they performed a shorter set of the same songs. So Weekly sang After School twice, and I like the song, but I feel like it definitely had less impact the second time, because, you know, We'd already heard it once. It was just, it was a bit confusing. Like I said, in the Saturday one, they did different songs, and so it really just felt like an extended performance. In a way, I felt like the first two acts had the best deal because they actually got a lot more time on stage. They still performed really well, but Paul Kim said in particular, he, w he was kind of announcing the song that he was going to do next and then said, oh, you know, I'm aware that most of you were here earlier, so you already heard it, but we're gonna play it again. He seemed kind of embarrassed and I feel like that was just bad communication maybe, bad organisation, but it's not nice to see an artist on stage feeling flustered or kind of like they didn't know what was going on, so I hope that they were okay with the situation. Obviously the Saturday groups knew what was happening, so yeah, who knows. And Gravity came on, they had great energy, uh, great dancing. <laughs> I really enjoyed watching all the boy group choreographies because uh, for the girl groups I already watched a lot of their stuff and I kind of knew what to expect so it was great seeing it in person but it wasn't a new discovery in the same way. It definitely made a big difference that we were much closer on the Sunday. So this time we weren't um, in the general standing either, we were with VIP standing. When Kepler came on I was really excited. <laughs>
I watched Girls Planet 999 um, and my favourites were actually Suyeon and Hikaru so I was very excited to see Hikaru and she performed so well obviously and um, it was really nice as well that they had just released their comeback up like a week or so beforehand. Hikaru had a lot more lines and in general the song was a lot more my vibe than Wadada or Mask so yeah it was really cool to see them perform that and I've actually been watching Queendom as well hopefully by the time I post this I'll have actually finished it. I'm on the final episode I was like paranoid before I left that I was gonna get spoilers for the event <laughs> just because I thought also people might be talking about it since they've been on the show luckily that didn't happen at one point they started talking about the program and my friend covered my ears but then I think we realized they were actually talking about Girls Planet so <laughs> oh well I missed something but that's fine oh that reminds me though they had like some some patchiness with the translations so I could understand bits and pieces of what they were saying but a lot of the time like it was not translated. Um, I feel like the translator on Sunday was a lot more present and they only kind of didn't really translate when the members kept talking kind of too often and they obviously didn't want to interrupt. SF9 were great, don't have too much to say about it but yeah well done to them. <laughs> Then Kai came on and even though I'm not like a fan, I was looking forward to hearing a couple of his big hits and yeah the atmosphere was so good in the crowd especially when he got to like his big dance break bit. <laughs> His performance was really impressive. There was actually a bit where he had like I think it was a wardrobe malfunction um, and he had to leave the stage and come back. I feel like that was unfortunate because as a soloist he couldn't just have the other group members kind of you know filling in the time and chatting to the audience he just had to leave the stage but for me it was good because it gave me like it was near the end so it meant that I could go get some more water go to the toilet get myself like ready to leave so that I could get home afterwards so to be honest I found that quite useful and I ran back and got in just in perfect time to see the next song so yeah it was all good um it was solved relatively quickly I want to say within 10 minutes yeah it would have been nice to hear a bit of a longer set from him but obviously it was what it was and the fact that we were able to see that many groups in London of all places like where hardly any k-pop groups have come uh was really amazing i think that's about it from me but please let me know if you're interested in this type of content again let me know what you want to hear as always let me know what you want to see thank you so much for watching all the way to the end i really appreciate it and i hope you're having a great day great week great month great life and i'll see you soon bye